Welcome to Mr. B's Auto Shop. Today we're going to cover the removal and inspection and repacking of a set of wheel bearings on a rear wheel drive car. Most vehicles are very close, if not the same, so this can be used for many other vehicle types. Why would you repack the wheel bearings or replace them? Well, if they make noise when you spin the wheel, a grinding or a growling noise, or if there's excessive play. And we can see how there is play in this wheel. So we need to go ahead and repack the wheel bearings. So first step is removing the wheel assembly. Once we have the wheel assembly off, we're going to go ahead and remove the caliper assembly and we're going to hang it from the spring to prevent us from catching or stretching the line. Alright, to remove this caliper, these two bolts, it takes a 12 millimeter. It does not have a caliper mounting bracket, so it's just the caliper itself. The caliper, the caliper, I should say, runs on guide pins. So while we have the caliper off, we may as well inspect and lube those. It's also a good time to check the brakes to see if you need brakes. So we're gonna pull the bolts out, check them because sometimes they're, the top bolt and the bottom bolt will be different lengths. So we wanna make sure that they are the same length so we don't run the bolt into the rotor when we tighten them. Then pull out on the guide pins and then you're going to go ahead and pull the caliper off. But first we're going to compress the piston a little bit to relieve the tension on it. So the easiest way to do that is with a large flathead screwdriver. So slide it into the end right here up against the side of the rotor and then give it a little pull and that's going to compress the piston a little bit and give you a little bit of wiggle room to be able to pull the caliper off. Then I'm going to take a caliper hanger, put it through the eyelet right here, and then hang it off of the coil spring. So that way it's not stretching the line. Then I'm going to go ahead and pull my brake pads out and you may as well take the upper anti-rattle spring off because otherwise it's going to fall on the ground anyways and this way we'll save ourselves a little bit of work we're now ready to remove the rotor this uh if you have a front wheel drive vehicle you're not going to have a dust cap on it and it's going to have a different type of bearing but for a rear wheel drive vehicle the bearing is covered with what is called a dust cap and you need a pair of dust cap pliers to remove the cap. So it has a little lip on it. So you want to take the top end of the pliers and set it over the lip and then tap it gently with a hammer. And you can see that it popped out. Then I'm going to rotate the rotor 180 degrees and I'm going to grab the bottom as well and the top and I'm going to give it a little tap. And now I have removed the dust cap. If you hit it too hard, you will dent the cap. And then when the person's driving down the road, it's going to fly off. It's going to get stuck inside the hub cap and go think, 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 think while they drive down the road and they're not going to be very happy. So make sure that you uh, don't dent it. Next, we're going to remove the cotter pin that holds the castle nut or the castle sleeve. So the best tool to do that with is a pair of diagonal cutters or dikes. So we're just gonna close the legs of it and then you can use the dikes up against the top of the rotor to pull it the rest of the way out. Do not reuse these, always put a new one in 
so that it, there's no chance of it failing. Next, we have our castle retainer. And this guy right here is what keeps the, the nut from turning on its own, so it locks it in place. Just like all tapered wheel bearings, uh, you should be able to loosen this nut with your hand. Uh, they're set up at zero lash or zero play, so you should never need any tool. Once we have the outer bearing out, go ahead and re-thread the, the nut back on. And you're going to get it on there two or three revolutions. Make sure you don't cross thread it. Sometimes they can be a little booger to go back on there for some reason. Turn that guy over. There we go. You're going to grab the rotor on the sides, tilt the rotor down, and then you're going to pull it off the spindle, dragging it on the spindle. And when you do that, it'll take the inner bearing out. So now I have removed the rotor and left the inner bearing hanging on the spindle. So it's a lot easier than trying to hammer the uh, seal out or push the seal out with the bearing. And I'm going to go ahead and take the nut off and remove my seal and my bearing. And then I'm going to wipe all of the stuff off the spindle. And then I'm going to inspect the spindle's races, the areas it seals on, for damage or bluing, which is caused by excessive heat. And I'm going to go ahead and clean out this area as well. Now, if your vehicle has ABS, there will be an ABS sensor located here. And you want to go ahead and clean that as well. If it builds up a lot of grease or metal deposits on it, it's not going to read a good signal, and that could turn your ABS light on. Once I have it wiped down, I'm going to go ahead and clean it. Some brake cleaner. And give it another wipe. So this spindle's in good condition. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, move to the bench for the wheel bearings. Remember to never use solvent on the bearings. When we clean them, we always just use a rag. So we're going to go ahead and wipe them off. We're looking for discoloration, blue or black on the bearing, or lines in the bearing. All right, so if we take a look at this, we can see that they're nice and silver in color, and there's no lines or streaks through them. So we know the bearing's in good condition. So we're gonna put that one off to the side and we're gonna do the other one. Now in a lot of vehicles, the load bearing bearing is on the inside and the follower bearing is on the outside. Because the follower bearing has no pressure on it, a lot of time the races will be made of plastic. So we have chrome roller bearings in a plastic race. Uh, they don't fail very often, they're pretty durable, so there's no need to be worried or freaked out if your bearing has a plastic race on it. The inner bearing, the load bearing bearing, will never have a plastic sleeve. So we're going to look for any metal built up in there, or any bluing on the rollers, and we can see that one's in good condition too. When you do a rear wheel drive vehicle, the inside of the rotor has a cavity to put grease in. So we always want to clean that cavity out of the old grease and wipe it out so we can put in fresh grease. When the grease gets hot, it actually melts and turns into an oil. And then that's what flows around and lubricates the bearing. So if you don't refill that reservoir, then you're not going to have enough lubrication. And the, the new bearing that you installed or the repack you did will fail rather quickly. So make sure that you always repack it. So we've cleaned the inside. Now we're gonna go ahead and clean the outside. And now we're ready to repack the bearing. 
So flip it upside down. I am gonna take a generous amount of grease and make sure it's high temperature disc brake grease. And I'm gonna fill the cavity on the inside. A little bit extra never hurt anything. It's kind of like money. If you have a little bit more, no one's ever said, man, I've got too much money. What am I gonna do? So, and if you are that person, go ahead and send me a check. I'll help you spend all that extra money you have. Just saying. All right, so now I have the cavity, the reservoir filled with grease. I'm gonna wipe off where the seal's gonna go. And then I'm gonna pack the bearing. So we pack it the same way we do all tapered bearings. We're going to put a handful of grease in our hand. We are going to grab the bearing with the large side facing down. And then I am going to push it against the palm of my hand and force the grease into the bearing. You will then see it starting to push grease out and you're gonna keep going till it's fresh grease, like right there. Then we're gonna rotate it a little bit and then continue till we go all the way around. Make sure you push all the dirty old grease out, um, otherwise you're not really doing anything. So we, all the black grease, wants, you want it to come to the top and then once you start seeing the fresh grease, then we know we have done a good job. All right, once I have that, I'm gonna go ahead and set that in the inner race. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the outer bearing. So once again, the large side down, gather up your grease a little bit, and then pack that in. A little rotate, back it in some more. A little rotate. Now the first time you do this, you're gonna get grease everywhere. So make sure you're wearing something you don't like and you're not working in a nice clean driveway um, because this grease will just spread for days. All right, now I have the other one finished packed. I'm gonna go ahead and install the seal. So I'm gonna need the seal driving set and we're gonna inspect the seal. When we inspect the seal, we're gonna look for tears around the rubber seal, the ring itself, and we're gonna make sure that it's not bent or distorted. If it hasn't been changed in a little while, it's a good idea to put a new seal on it just to keep it from leaking all over the place. So we're gonna inspect the seal. It's nice and flat. Place it on the top. And then you are going to get the seal driver. And we're gonna find one that's large enough. And then we're going to tap it down with a mallet or a hammer. And then do the same thing. Go around the edges and make sure it's flat. So now we've installed the seal. Next step is to put the rotor back on the car. You want to go ahead and clean off the inside of the rotor with the brake clean so that you're not leaving any greasy fingerprints on it. If you leave greasy fingerprints on it, it will make the brake squeak, and it also could make it not stop very well because grease isn't a very good friction surface. And then we're gonna slide the rotor on. Then we're gonna grab the, wa the thrust washer and the outer bearing and we're going to go ahead and slide the outer bearing on whatever grease comes through just go ahead and wipe that off with your finger then we're going to put the thrust washer on it only goes on one way so you need to rotate it around so you get it to the right spot 
Then we're gonna start the nut. Go ahead and grab a rag. And then you're going to spin the nut till it's hand tight. Then we're gonna spin the rotor and tighten the nut. Then we're gonna loosen the nut and the rotor and then spin them tight together. You never want to go more than hand tight, never use a tool. Check it to make sure it's snug and there's no free play. In the spindle, there is a hole that runs down through the whole center of the spindle. So we're going to line up two of the peaks of the castle to those holes. And if it doesn't line up on the first try, go ahead and rotate it and then you can line it up then. Then we're going to take our new cotter pin and drop it down through. And a lot of people do this in different ways. I'm pretty particular about how I do it because I like it to look really sanitary. So I always grab the long leg, which is right here. And I'm going to pull the long leg over the top like so. And then I'm going to clip it. This way it's not going to drag on the cap. If it drags on the cap, it's going to make a dink, 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 dink noise and that's going to drive your customer nut. And then I'm going to cut it even with the castle on the bottom, like that. So it looks nice and sanitary and professional. I am now ready to put my dust cap back on. So go ahead and set it on. And some people like to whack them with a hammer. Uh, if you do that, you can really dent the cap. So I like using a rubber dead blow. That way I don't dent the cap at all. Otherwise it'll rub against the cotter pin. Once I have that done, now I'm gonna go ahead and rehang the caliper. Go ahead and slide the brake pads in. If you by accident forgot which brake pad is which, well, the inside one's always gonna have the caliper mark on it. And in this case, well, you can't put them on wrong because this one has a butterfly. Don't forget to put your anti-rattle clip in. And then we're going to install the inner brake pad. And sometimes they can be a little booger to get on there. There we go. And then we're going to install the outside one. And then I'm going to slide the caliper on. Make sure you push the uh, guides out of the way because otherwise it'll get stuck. And now we're ready to install our bolts. And then we're going to tighten them up. It's always a good idea to torque them, especially in the beginning. Uh, caliper bolts can be fragile, and if this is, you're new at this, well, it's pretty easy to break them or leave them loose enough where they'll fly out. Next, I'm going to clean the outside of the rotor. Make sure you rotate it a little bit to get the area that was underneath the brake pads. If you need to use a rag because there's an area that had a heavy concentration of grease, uh, just rinse it with the brake cleaner once you're done. And if we look right down here, we can see that there's a little bit of grease right here. So we're going to get that out of there. The rag may leave a little residue, so that's why you want to spray it down once you finish wiping it. All right, now we're ready to put the wheel back on. Make sure you fetch the caliper hanger back so you don't ship it down the road because you'll get tired of buying those. And that's how you do a 
rear wheel drive uh, wheel bearings, repack, inspection, and adjustment. Thank you for watching Mr. B's Auto Shop.